can't really take a day off of autism. Autism never took a day off on me. A lot of ways, she's like a baby. She's just bigger. Dash. She needs constant attention. She can't be left alone crying for a on minute. Me. She always she has to have crying. my attention. And it's, it's exhausting. In one year, we have three kids who were diagnosed with spectrum disorders. <laughs> He used to take his clothes off a lot, and, and we're working on that. He doesn't speak much at all. Hi. Hi. He has never spoken a single word. Everything about Daniel's life that seems normal for a typical kid, like going out to dinner or, or going to a park, all that for us is work. Good. A little bit more. I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. It's impossible you, you for me to dead. talk on the phone at home. Take your plate and bring it to the kitchen. I so hope I won't be changing diapers when he's six and a half. I didn't choose to do this. I'm not a therapist. I was drafted. I have an autistic child. Everything I do is, is about autism. Do you want to do the alphabet or the numbers? Do you want to go up? Uh, up? OK. I have to stay home with him because I have to facilitate the, the therapist going here, going there, the medication, the constant medical appointments. I really had to give up my entire life as I knew it. Well, I left the job that I never intended to leave. And I did have to um, quit my job. Our entire social life revolves around autism, and all of our friends are parents of children with autism. And the parents of autistic children often stick together, and, and we have to. Because they understand if your kid is having a meltdown and there's no judgment, it's just that's how it is. You know, it's very hard to maintain friendships with people that have no idea, like, just how difficult your life is on a day-to-day -day basis. They have no idea how easy it is compared to this. You know, your heart is breaking all day long. You know, you think about his future and, and all the pain he's in. And I don't think they can understand that. And the parents who were going out for bagels together and are like, oh, do you want to come for a bagel? And I think, yes, in another life, I'd love to come for a bagel. But right now, I have to write down what he's doing so we can go home and work on that. And then I have to take the other two to therapy. So, no, I can't go for a bagel. Danson um, ran out the door himself, which was absolutely terrifying. It was freezing cold, no shirt on, and no shoes on. Daniel had walked at the front door. He got away from me, and he was running down the middle of First Avenue. She took off once, and we had to call the police. I immediately called the police. I'm just running straight on into traffic. Daniel wouldn't look at traffic. Running, sprinting down to that traffic light. He's going to get hit by a car. I really was sure that he would be struck by a car. People were beeping. My heart was racing. I felt my life going in like slow motion. Anything could have happened. It's very scary. It's very, very scary. I feel like I'm playing this game, which is life or death to me. Can't you just keep your child quiet? No. People have no idea what it's like to have a child with autism. Huh? Bessie? He's too old for that. He shouldn't be having that. We're just judged 
more harshly and more constantly and expected to do things that no human being should be expected to do. Why is she screaming? Why is he hitting himself? What are you doing to her? Why are you making her cry? And I say, well, you know, are you an expert in autism? It's always heartbreaking. <sighs> when Jody was on the swings and crying. The other moms were sort of looking and wondering why this eight and a half year old girl was screaming and carrying on because she didn't want to get on a swing. I would like people to second guess themselves when they look at me and they think that A, I can't control my kid or B, um, he, I'm abusing my child because he's screaming. <laughs> Have a little bit more understanding, a little bit more compassion, and show that to your children as well. I'm an educator, and here I have a child that I have no idea how to teach. Okay, come on in your seat. This morning I wanted Danson to sit with me and do a puzzle. Put that in the puzzle. He could care less. You know, when he feels like doing it, he will sit there and do that whole puzzle in 30 seconds, or he won't. And I was a grown woman afraid of the phone ringing because it was the school principal calling me saying she had bitten someone, or she had kicked a kid, or she had hit a teacher. And that's why they have special ed classes. Uh, they don't want Daniel to be disrupted. They don't want a lot of times for their kids to have to deal with that. When he turns five, I wish so much that he could go to kindergarten here. He can't go to kindergarten. You know, my school district doesn't have, they they don't have anything appropriate for him. There are parents what who are, are forced to put kids in schools that are completely overcrowded and 12 kids and one teacher, and the, the kids don't make progress. But I remember that was a very scary moment for me when I realized I had sat in the car for about 15 minutes and actually contemplated putting Jody in the car and driving off the George Washington Bridge and that that would be preferable to having to put her in one of these schools. And it's only because of Lauren, the fact that I have another child, that I probably didn't do it. Take See you later. Matthias, off your hands. Love you. Say bye. Bye. Matthias was four months old when Christian was diagnosed. It just took a lot of the naturalness, the joy of having a baby out of the equation because we were always filled with fear. Bye. 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 And I have Lauren whose babyhood I missed because she was two months old when Jody was diagnosed. I see Pooh Bear's house. What do you see, Jody? And so the first two years of Lauren's life are a complete blur. He wants to fix Christian and he, he makes a big show about examining people. I don't want anybody to make fun of her. It's sad. I forget sometimes that he lost Christian too. I wish I had a sister without autism. When you have a child with autism, I think the rate for divorce is like 80%. Having a child who needs what Danson needs made it really difficult for me to balance my life and be a mother and have a job and be a wife. I didn't give that marriage um, what I could have because I had nothing left to give. We never have any time to be together. It's always one of us with Jody. It was just um, an angry time where we, I think both felt so helpless and did not know what to do and really like sort of turned on each other. It's very hard to manage the, the emotional issues, the financial issues, which are huge. We had to borrow money from my parents. We had to borrow money from my sister so that we could create this environment for the kids. But all the money in the world, the $50,000 that we're in debt, is all about the autism. <laughs> what I spend on the medical activities uh, that the insurance companies are not paying for, it's a large number. We had a big leak in the living room that was coming down in like a bucket. It's been over two years and those holes are still there because 
We don't have any money to fix that. We keep saying that we're just sending, you know, Daniel to Harvard over and over again <laughs> every year for the rest of his life. We just keep taking out loans to pay the bills and we pay for special food and extra therapies all out of loans. So you just keep borrowing and you just keep trying and you just keep being disappointed and you just keep going broke. Danson goes through phases where he doesn't sleep for like two or three weeks and you're up all night. It's like you have a hangover the next day, but you didn't have any fun the night before. The only solace he will find is if we're driving around. So I literally have driven around in the car all night long. You wake up like in a frat house. Like I, I'm, I wake up here sleeping on the couch. I'm in my other son's room. I'm there. Christian's sleeping sideways across our bed. I mean, we just pass out. It occurs to me that this is insane. Like my life is completely insane at this moment. I have to live forever. Nothing can happen to me. I can never die. I don't think there's a day that doesn't go by where I don't think about, oh, what happens when I'm not here? Who's going to take care of Daniel? I'm panicking because I didn't write an updated list of what to do in case something happens to me. I've got to write who's in charge of his program, what doctors he goes to, what vitamins and supplements he needs, and what the plan is because it's all up to me. You first get diagnosed and you say to yourself, um, you know, I'm gonna do a year of really hard work and he's gonna be fine, he's gonna be better. And then the year comes by and you're like, okay, maybe like two years and then maybe like three years. And then you realize, okay, so, so basically, this is lifelong. Yeah. I imagined Little League and trips and vacations and um, girlfriends, and it's taken me a very long time to let those dreams go. Christian's a human being who's fighting so hard, like you can't believe. And what's been taken from him is... It's indescribable. Jackson is never gonna get married and never gonna have kids. When I'm at somebody else's wedding, and they're dancing with their mother. What I would do to dance with Jackson. He is trying so hard to stay in himself and I'm trying so hard to pull him out all the time. Hey, look up, let me see your face. Okay. I think that they have this misconception that all our kids are are just mentally retarded and that's it and what can you do, what can be done and we want to change that. I know that science is making great breakthroughs and my hope is that by the time Lauren's ready to have a baby, we'll have a cure or we'll, we'll understand how to prevent autism. I'm never going to say, you know, I quit. It's not really my vocabulary. As I assume it's not in a lot of autistic parents' vocabulary. I just cannot accept we have to throw away this generation of children. No way. If you don't think positively, you won't make it through the day. Dancing is my greatest teacher, and I know that and he teaches me something every single day. When I see him do something that we've worked so hard on and he's worked so hard on, it gives me hope that he'll get there. It's just gonna take a long time. He's very, very loving to me. Say, I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that.